how is your head? A lot of people still are, have expressed concern that you know maybe something went wrong. How is your head? Yeah, I obviously went into the tent, and um, I can only control what I can control, and um, what we talked about there, they deemed me cleared to play, and that's kind of what happened. So that's as deep as I'll get into it. See, this gets back to the tension that exists in football between getting the best players on the field and engaging in actual health care. And there's a point where the rubber meets the road. And we've seen some potholes from time to time. We've seen some hubcaps go flying off. Remember when Russell Wilson just basically circumvented whoever was on the sidelines and came back onto the field? We've seen the T.J. Watt tin advisor. Oh, he doesn't have a concussion. Well, is he just trying to make a fashion statement by putting on a tin advisor in the middle of the game after he got blown up and took what was a clear shot to the head? We saw the Tua Tonga-Valoa back injury a couple of years ago, the back injury when he was wobbly and woozy and anyone with any sense knew that something was amiss and it wasn't a back injury. What we saw on Sunday, and I know that few of us are medical professionals, and even if you're a medical professional, you have to treat the patient to know what's going on. The head hits the ground, and there's distress in the aftermath as teammates and trainers come to him. He explained he rolled his ankle. They were testing him out in the tent. They found out while he was in the tent that he needed a concussion evaluation. Six minutes and six seconds of actual clock time. Two minutes and 30 seconds of game time. He was back with smelling salts on the way back to the field, which is not exactly an ideal look in this situation. Check the boxes to get the guy back versus health care. And we're talking about real-time health care. And the point that Dr. Julian Bales made to me years ago, and I was talking to somebody else recently, and this came up again. You, you can't properly do a concussion evaluation in a nylon blue tent amid 70,000 people with the noise, with the activity. You got to take them into the locker room, take the shoulder pads off, sit down and rest, gather yourself, and then we'll do it. The one thing they want to avoid, I believe, 10 minutes of time passes and you find out the guy was fine all along and his team has had to play the game without him. That's where, as I said, the rubber meets the road. All right, we have Coach Dungy. Are we bringing Coach Dungy on, Pete, or are we taking a break? I think we're just bringing Coach... Oh, we're going to take a break. Okay, we will take a break. So we'll continue to monitor this story and it's going to continue to happen. And that's the question you want to ask yourself. Are they checking boxes to get the player back on the field or are they giving the player health care that the player might not want because the player wants to get back on the field as badly as his team wants him back on the field. And depending upon how important he is to the sport, the league might want him back on the field as well. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.